Boomerangs are traditionally associated with Australia, and for good reason. Indigenous Australians have used them for thousands of years, and the word boomerang itself comes from an Aboriginal language. It refers to a returning throwing stick, although not all boomerangs were designed to return. But what if I told you that the oldest known boomerang doesn't come from Australia at all, but from Central Europe? According to research published in June 2025, an artifact found in Poland dates back to a time when Neanderthals were still around and the first modern humans had just arrived in the region. I'm Karl and this is the story of the world's oldest boomerang and the people who made it. For millennia, boomerangs were used for hunting and sometimes as ceremonial objects. And while they are iconic in Australia, similar ancient weapons have been discovered across Europe, North America, Asia and Africa. Even Pharaoh Tutankhamun owned a collection of boomerangs. But the earliest known images of these weapons long predate the boy king. They appear in Australian rock art, dating back to around 20,000 years. When it comes to actual physical objects, though, the oldest known boomerang was found in southern Poland. It was unearthed in 1985 by a team of archaeologists led by Professor Paweł Waldenowak during excavations in Obłazowa Cave. Made from mammoth tusk, the boomerang is remarkably well preserved. Nearly the entire object has survived, though not in one piece. It was originally radiocarbon dated to around 18,000 years ago, which already made it exceptionally old. For comparison, the oldest known aboriginal boomerang is about 10,000 years old. But now, an international team of scientists argues that the original date is unreliable, likely due to contamination from conservation materials used after excavation. The artifact is too fragile for further direct testing, so researchers turned to a different approach. They applied advanced statistical modeling to radiocarbon dates from animal bones and a human finger bone, found in the same archaeological layer as the boomerang. The results are astonishing. With over 95% confidence, the analysis suggests the boomerang is between 39,280 and 42,290 years old. That makes it by far the oldest known boomerang in the world, much older than previously thought. So the next question is, what was it used for? The boomerang has a crescent shape with pointed ends and a cross section that's flat on one side and convex on the other. It's also slightly twisted along its longest axis, a natural feature of mammoth tusks which twisted as they grew. It weighs about 800 grams, measures up to 5.2 cm wide, 1.5 cm thick and is 72 cm long. Its form closely resembles wooden Queensland-type boomerangs, which were used by Aboriginal Australians both as weapons and in ceremonies. But that similarity doesn't necessarily mean it served the same purpose. The surface of the boomerang shows signs of both natural wear and deliberate modification. On the convex side, the outer surface of the tusk, there are scratches likely made during the animal's life. But near one end, a set of thin oblique scratches deviates from the natural grain, pointing to intentional shaping by humans. The opposite, flatter side is polished and bears two distinct types of human-made marks. Fine, nearly parallel lines, probably from shaping, and deeper, wider incisions, possibly decorative, 
especially where they intersect at one end. Further analysis revealed many longitudinal striations across both faces, likely from final smoothing and polishing. These overlapping marks are most prominent in the midsection, where the surface appears especially worn, probably from frequent handling. Near the broader, rounded end, additional oblique marks are visible on both sides. These likely served to improve grip. The shape of this end suggests it was made for a right-handed user, optimized for throwing from the right hand. In 1995, the boomerang's aerodynamic properties were put to the test by Fridolin Frost, a renowned boomerang athlete and designer. Using a replica of the Obwazowa cave artifact, Frost found that it flew faster and farther than a stick of similar size and weight. It didn't return to the thrower, and its flight path was relatively flat, with the longest throw reaching 66 meters. This suggests it could have been a practical tool, likely for hunting. However, there's an important caveat. At the time of the test, researchers were unaware of the slight twist in the original boomerang's shape, a natural curve of the mammoth tusk. As a result, the replica didn't fully reflect the original design. Further testing with more accurate models is still needed. As archaeologists often say, context is everything. And in this case, it's especially true. The objects found alongside the boomerang make its discovery even more intriguing. Taken together, they point not just to practical use, but possibly to a ceremonial or symbolic function as well. The Obwazowa cave lies on the southern slope of an isolated rocky hill overlooking the Białka River Valley. It contains a 9-meter-long, 5-meter-wide and 3-meter-high chamber, accessed through a short corridor. Near the entrance, a pit about 2 meters deep was excavated, likely to improve access to the cave's inner areas. Excavations have revealed that the cave was used by humans during several different periods. The earliest traces of occupation date back around 50,000 years and were left by Neanderthals. Later layers, beginning around 43,000 years ago, show the presence of modern humans. The most significant discoveries came from what archaeologists call Layer 8. Inside the chamber, slightly to the left, researchers uncovered a circular structure made of granite and quartzite boulders. These stones seem to have been deliberately transported from the nearby river and carefully arranged. Within this stone circle, archaeologists found the mammoth ivory boomerang, along with a human finger bone, two pendants made from arctic fox canines, and a broken sandstone slab. Nearby, they also discovered a rock crystal, two antler wedges likely used for mining, and two perforated cone snail shells. These shells may have been pendants, but Professor Paweł Waldenowak suggests they could also have been whistles, perhaps used in shamanic rituals performed within the cave. One detail that strongly supports a ritual interpretation of this assemblage is the presence of ochre, a natural reddish pigment, on all the items. In prehistory, ochre was widely used in cave art, and sometimes in burial rituals, applied to the bodies of the deceased or to grave goods. Additional objects were found scattered throughout the same layer of the cave, stone and flint tools, bone points, a bone bead, another conus shell, and numerous other flint artifacts. What the boomerang meant within this context remains a mystery. 
It's made of mammoth ivory, a material that came from massive, powerful and impressive animals. That alone may have imbued it with symbolic way. Its crescent shape also invites interpretation. It might have been used in rituals tied to lunar phases. Depending on how it was held, it could represent either a waxing or waning crescent moon. But that's just my speculation. Aside from the boomerang, the most intriguing object in the assemblage is the human phalanx. DNA testing confirmed that it belonged to a modern human, Homo sapiens. Its presence in this context has sparked speculation that it may have been part of a ritual sacrifice. This interpretation draws parallels with rock art from other parts of Europe, specifically depictions of human hands with missing fingers. In Francis Coscar Cave, for example, 28 of the 49 known hand stencils lack one or more fingers. Similar images appear in the caves of Maltravieso and Fuente del Trucho in Spain. But the site with the highest number is Gargas Cave in France, where 114 out of 231 handprints show missing fingers. An astonishing proportion. These images date to roughly 22,000 to 27,000 years ago, during the height of the last Ice Age. One theory suggests the missing fingers were lost to frostbite. Another proposes that the fingers aren't truly missing at all, but simply bent, perhaps as part of an artistic gesture or symbolic code. And then there's the ritual explanation. Some scholars believe these could represent deliberate finger amputations, performed during ceremonies to invoke supernatural forces or as mourning sacrifices. There are even modern examples of such practices, like among the Dani people of the New Guinea Highlands, where women have traditionally amputated fingers after the death of close relatives. But here's the issue. The bone found in Obwazowa cave is from a thumb, and in most Paleolithic hand stencils, thumbs are left intact. So maybe this wasn't a sacrifice after all, but rather an offering made of a kind of talisman, or possibly a symbolic burial. To imagine how such a burial might have worked, think of the relics of saints, which are still venerated in many churches today. Or heart burials, where a person's heart was entered separately from the body. These were surprisingly common among the medieval European elite. Whatever rituals were performed here, people kept coming back to this place for generations. But who were they? The artifacts from layer 8 date to the early origination culture of the Upper Paleolithic. This layer spans roughly 42,000 to 38,000 years ago. The human phalanx found there has been dated to about 35,000 years ago, but this date should be taken with caution. Poor collagen quality means the bone may have undergone post-mortem changes that affect the reliability of the estimate. The Aurignacian people entered Europe from the Near East around 43,000 years ago into a landscape very different from today. Vast herds of herbivores, deer, bison and aurochs roamed the northern plains. Cave lions and wolves stalked their young, while hyenas fought over carcasses. Majestic rhinos and mammoths slowly browsed on shrubs. The growls of cave bears echoed through caverns in the hills. To the north, massive glaciers covered Scandinavia, the British Isles and parts of Germany and Poland, marking the boundary of this bustling yet harsh environment. 
The Aurignacian people moved into territories once inhabited by Neanderthals and eventually outcompeted them, spreading across the continent. Today we find their distinctive flint and ivory tools, but also their remarkable art. Just take a look at the paintings on the walls of Chauvet Cave in France. The incredible attention to detail and lifelike realism reveal that these people were not only keen observers of their environment, but also highly skilled artists. They carved numerous ivory figurines, animals, but also some of the earliest known depictions of humans, like the Venus of Hulle Fels. Some of their art may have expressed their beliefs. A prime example is the famous Lion Man, an ivory sculpture merging a human body with the head of a cave lion. This piece shows they were capable of abstract thought, imagining and creating images of beings not found in the natural world. Much like many of us today, they wore jewelry, but beyond decoration, these pieces likely held symbolic or ritual significance. The variety of styles suggests they were not a single uniform group, but had cultural differences across distant populations. They may even have spoken different languages. We also know they enjoyed music. Several instruments attributed to them have been found, including a roughly 40,000-year-old bone flute from Hulle Fels and a passable musical bow from Geisenklusterle in Germany. And here, in Obwazowa cave, perforated conus shells may have served as whistles. But don't get me wrong, these were tough people, skilled hunters capable of taking down the largest beasts and fending off the fiercest predators. They lived in small groups, maybe just a few dozen individuals. More than 40,000 years ago, one such group discovered Obwazowa cave. The place became special to them, and possibly to a wider community in the region. As they moved through the tundra of what is now southern Poland, they returned to the cave repeatedly, leaving offerings and performing rituals long forgotten. Archaeological research shows that this distinct phase of occupation in layer 8 lasted about 3500 years. At the heart of it all was the ivory boomerang. We may never fully understand its meaning or the whole story behind it, but one thing is clear, it was important to them, and now it is important to us. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.